What's up, guys? You can check out our podcast, articles, or our full proxy gallery all at our brand new website, www.itresolvesmtg.com. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today, we're opening up a pack of Unstable. So, this is the third installment of all of the joke sets that Wizards does every once in a while. We first had Unglued, then we had Unhinged, then Unstabled, and we actually just were announced we're getting Unsanctioned, uh, I believe in February of next year. A little bit of a different take on it, but it's still going to be really, really fun, I am sure. Uh, so... We're going to go through this as if we're going to draft this set, but let's be honest, guys, this is all about just silly cards and having some fun. Uh, they are all silver bordered, except I believe there's one card that isn't, uh, and it, again, was a bit of a joke in its own right. So we'll go through this. It'll be fun. We'll see what we get. So Finder's Keepers is our first card here. Uh, it's a sorcery for five and a black. Destroy target creature, then assemble a contraption. Uh, so the contraptions were a new thing added into this set. They are actual cards that you can draft. Uh, and they basically give you uh, every once every three turns or something like that, you get a buff out of them. Uh, they're actually really, really, really cool. Some really interesting stuff you can do with it. Uh, and I actually really like this card as well. Destroying target creature is always great. Uh, not super funny, if I'm going to be honest, as far as the card goes, but still very, very cool. Uh, and honestly, as a draft pick, it's very good. It's a little expensive, but the contraption really makes this uh, just over the top good. So definitely a strong uh, start for this pack. Uh, just Desserts is an instant for one and a red. It deals pie damage to target creature, 3.14. Uh, in case you were wondering, uh, this is a very silly card. I love this kind of stuff. It's just such a good flavor uh, mechanic, and it is actually very efficient. Uh, 3.14 damage for two mana at instant speed. I am in. I think that's great. I think I would rather have the Finder's Keepers, despite it being more expensive and a little less flexible, uh, solely because it does assemble that contraption, and I think that's really, really crucial. Uh, just Desserts, though, very, very strong and very efficient uh, at only two mana and instant speed. That's really, really good. Uh, Big Boa Constrictor is a 1-2 host creature for 3 and a black. Uh, so initially with these host creatures, you can pair them with other kinds of creatures, and we'll see some of those, I'm sure, as we go through. Uh, but the initial host creature says when this creature enters the battlefield and then has an effect. And in this case, you roll a six-sided die. Target opponent loses life equal to the result. So it's just a straight-up life loss kind of mechanic in this case. That, that can actually vary pretty heavily. We see a lot of interesting combos with those. Uh, and honestly, this is not super exciting. It's fine because you're losing life, but you're subject to the die roll. Uh, you could only deal one damage with this, and that would be really, really bad because you're only getting a 1-2 out of this creature. So I don't love this card. Uh, however, when paired with other creatures, you can actually get that effect multiple times. And again, hopefully we'll see that as we go through this pack. <clears throat> Uh, Chivalrous Chevalier uh, is a 3-3 flying creature uh, for 4 and a white. When it enters the battlefield, return a creature you control to its owner's hand unless you complement your opponent. Uh, so you actually do literally just have to complement the opponent. Uh, very silly card, but actually very, very good. A 3-3 for 5 with flying is pretty good. Uh, I actually really like this. You can actually turn that uh, return a creature you control to its owner's hand you can actually use that as an advantage as well. Uh, if you've got an enter the battlefield ability, like the big boa constrictor, for instance, you bounce that creature and then you get that ability once again. So it's actually kind of nice. Uh, still like finders keepers, just strong, good removal, but uh, do really like this card. It's a very solid uh, five drop. Uh, another host creature, uh, numbing jellyfish. Uh, is a 2-3 three for 3 and a blue, and when it enters the battlefield, you roll a 6-sided die. Target player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is the result. I had a lot of good luck with this card, actually, when drafting it. Uh, Mill is always really, really interesting in draft. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it, uh, just because you only have 40 cards to go through rather than 60. Uh, it does make it a lot easier. Uh, and because you can pair this with other kinds of creatures, you can actually get some really cool effects where this happens multiple times. Uh, I believe they're augment creatures, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that's the term. Uh, and so this is actually a really strong play. 
Uh, a two, three, four, four, not amazing, but again, with that ability and hopefully being able to trigger it at different times, very, very good. <clears throat> uh, no made engine, another host creature, a two, two for four of any color. And when it enters the battlefield, create a one, one colorless gnome artifact creature token. Uh, this one, not super exciting. It's nice to be able to spit out some artifacts for sure. Uh, and for four mana, you're getting three power and three toughness on the field, just divided in between two creatures. However, uh, it is still a little understated in my opinion. What's nice about it is it does slot into any deck. So if you find yourself in like a host augment style deck and you just need some more host creatures, this is a great option just because you can put it into literally anything. Uh, but again, finder's keeper is just super, super strong removal. So it's really hard to, uh, to pass up on that. Uh, secret base is a land that you can tap for generic mana. Uh, or tap it and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Spend this mana only to cast a creature that shares a, moder a watermark excuse me, with secret base. So as you can tell here, this has the umbrella key kind of watermark. I believe that's the uh, S-N-E-A-K uh, watermark, so sneak HQ, uh, which is really cool uh, that they did the, the sort of... Um, I don't want to say tribal because it's not tribal, but it's sort of like guilds almost in uh, Ravnica where you have specific cards that kind of fit that theme or that uh, that set. And that's really, really cool. Uh, I do like this, but again, you kind of have to be solidified into a particular kind of guild uh, before you really get the value off of this. If you're not, if you find yourself taking a lot of cards of a lot of different kinds of uh, guilds and everything, probably not as worth it. Uh, I'd never found myself really worried about these. Uh, so not a super exciting card, but not bad if you find yourself in that position. <clears throat> uh, our first uh, uncommon is Kindly Cognition. Uh, it's a 1-3 for 1 and a blue. Spells you cast that refer to artifacts or contraptions in their rules text cost one less to cast. So this is actually a really cool effect that just deals or, or gives you a lot of extra value and uh, cheapening all of your uh, artifacts and your contraptions, which can actually be very, very powerful. Uh, I do like this. I like that technically it's not an, a legendary creature, so you could really get a lot of these and just make things like t potentially free, which would be really cool. Uh, but again, Finders Keepers, just that strong removal makes it really hard to pass up. I don't know if this is better uh, because it is such a good enabler, so I'm going to keep them together for now. We'll see what we get in the rest of the pack. Uh, Contraption Cannon is an artifact for four of any color. You can pay two of any color and sacrifice it, and it deals damage to target creature or player equal to the number of contraptions you control. So, interesting card. I don't love it. Uh, it's a little bit expensive, but it can deal a lot of damage. Uh, and the fact that it does hit a player as well is quite nice, actually. Uh, I do think that that's really, really good because you could technically win the game off of this if you just have a ton of contraptions. So I do actually like it for that reason, uh, but it is pretty big on the investment side of things. Uh, you have to play four mana first, then pay two mana, then sacrifice this. That's just a lot that adds up. So I don't know that I love it here over some of the other cards that we have, but I do think it's pretty strong uh, for sure, just because you can straight up nuke somebody with it. <clears throat> Uh, here we go. This is an augment creature. So uh, this is Rhino. Uh, and whenever this creature blocks is when you would do the uh, host effect. And we'll what we'll do if we can pick a card like this. Uh, so what you do is you play your host creature and then uh, for the augment cost, which is here three and a white, reveal this card from your hand and combine it with target host. You can only do that as a sorcery. Uh, and so you kind of play it like this. And this becomes the Rhino engine. Uh, and then whenever this creature blocks, you'd get this effect. So you get a 1-1 one, one creature token. So kind of cool. Uh, you also boost the, the stats of this by plus 1 and plus 4. Uh, again, really interesting kind of mechanic. Uh, I don't really love uh, the Rhino in particular. Um, I think it's fine, but it's kind of just a stall card, and I'd much rather have something that deals a little more damage or can get that effect off a little easily easier excuse me so don't love this one but a really cool showcase of how the augment and host works uh and then the earl of squirrel is our rare this is such a good card i love this guy so it's a four four for four and two green uh, it has squirrel link so damage dealt by this creature also causes you to create that many one one green squirrel creature tokens uh, and then creature tokens you control are squirrels in addition to their other creature types. And then other squirrels get plus one, plus one. So 
This has a lot of text, all centered around some squirrels. So this is a good card. Uh, not only does it is it a powerhouse on its own, just in the fact that it's going to be dealing a lot of damage and probably give, giving you a lot of squirrels, but it also makes all of your creature tokens squirrels, which is very, very nice for other token generators like the engine that we saw earlier. So I actually like this for multiple reasons, but it's definitely a very, very strong pick and uh, a flagship card in this set for sure. Uh, we do have the unstable land here. That forest is absolutely stunning. I love those. Uh, we did get a rare Mary O'Kill, uh, a rare foil, excuse me. Uh, it's a 5-5 five, five for 5, and then either a black or a red. You can pay hybrid black or red and switch Killbot or Mary O'Kill in your hand with one on the battlefield. So Killbot is another creature that you can play out early. Uh, and then the idea here is you can switch them out uh, for each other if you really wanted to, which is very, very good. Uh, to be able to get a 5-5 five, five that early is great. However, the Earl of Squirrel is good on its own, and so I have to say that's definitely a stronger pick in my opinion. Uh, again, it's a little bit conjecture. You kind of switch between the two, but I think that's definitely my take on it. Uh, and then we do have two um, uh, contraptions here. So Twiddle Stick Charger. Uh, is an artifact contraption when you crank it, uh, tap or untap target creature. So the cranking thing, basically you have three uh, sets that you can uh, place a contraption on, and then at the beginning of your upkeep every turn, you crank whichever one is next in line. And so wherever you've placed this, if you happen to be on that line, you actually get to crank it. I'm not explaining this super well uh, because it's a little bit difficult to do without visuals, but uh, the idea here is once every three turns, you will get this ability, which is really cool. Uh, this one, not super exciting, and I gotta be honest, I don't think this one is either. Uh, Dictation uh, Quillograph. Uh, when you crank it, until the end of the turn, target creature gains. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card, and then if you do, you discard a card. So it's kind of a looting ability. Uh, I don't love either of these. They are nice. I mean, any contraption is going to be nice to have. However, uh, I don't think that these are the premium ones. I don't think you should draft these super early. Uh, there are some that are very, very powerful, but these are not them. Sorry that light went out, by the way. Uh, it ran out of battery. Uh, so, in my opinion, this is a very easy Earl of Squirrel. That card is amazing in draft. Uh, very, very difficult to deal with if your opponents don't have a removal spell, and that just makes everything that you do so much more powerful. So, in my opinion, that's the pick. Feel free, of course, as always, to disagree in the comment section. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.